welcome here to this very special episode of The Light Between Us. It is brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Cicero, and of course we're here on 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, New York, and I'm here with the Director of Talent for Chick-fil-A Cicero, that's Brianna Henderson. Of course, of course I'm Dan Tortora, and you're here on Wake Up Call. Brianna, how are you? I'm doing really good. How are you today, Dan? <laughs> doing well. Good to, good to sit down with you, and you know, it's good to sit down with somebody that um, I talked to you a little bit off the air about how Jimmer and I met before this even opened. Mm -hmm. And we met in the trailer on the other side of the parking lot just the vision and the faith that he has and the fact that, you know, I already like Chick-fil-A, but I felt like he brought something different, something extra yeah. to the table. And he, when he speaks highly of someone, I take that very seriously. And he has spoken very highly of you and was very excited to get to tell your story. So I'd love to go back to how you connected with Chick-fil-A in the first place because I know you had said when we talked off the air that you were in New Jersey. So bring, bring us kind of into how it all began. Of course. Um, well, I think that my story with Chick-fil-A is actually a little funny um, just because I loved Chick-fil-A kind of like as an outsider looking in um, and I thought like okay like I'm gonna go to this place, I'm going to learn a little bit about leadership, I'm going to grow, and then I wanted to take that experience and do something completely different. Um, but once I got into the company, I started working and I like quickly started moving up, so I started as a team member. Um, but then like once I started as a team member, I kind of like, fell in love with it. Like there's just something about it that you kind of just like, oh, like, this is kind of nice. Like you get to know the people and then the leadership and things like that. And it was just different from any job I'd ever experienced. So I went from kind of wanting to learn and take that somewhere else to um, wanting to like really plant myself and invest myself in the company. And like you said, when you became a team member, you just kind of fell in love yeah. with the environment. Mm -hmm. What is it about Chick-fil-A that just feels different? Um, I mean, I think it might be a super duper like cheesy answer, but I just feel like it's like love. Um, I feel like there's just a whole lot of love in everything that we do. Um, so the, the thing that made a huge difference for me was the way that like we treat each other as a team. Um, I think that it's kind of standard practice, or it should at least be standard practice, that the employees um, serve the guests really well and we treat them well. Um, but I love that there's such an emphasis on the culture that we have here and the way that we treat and interact with each other. I think that that for me is kind of what makes the difference. So, in how you treat each other, how you interact with each other, you become a team member, you're in New Jersey. How did you end up in Central New York? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's actually a really weird story. Um, I worked my way up into leadership at the store that I was in. Um, and I think I just came into a season where I kind of knew that it was time to transition. Um, I feel like I just kind of felt it in a way. I was like, okay. Um, the operator that I used to have over my older, my other store, he actually um, passed away. So there was just like a whole lot of transition and changes that were happening. Um, and I felt like I was kind of reaching a cap in a way um, of just like how much I was able to like learn and grow in that place. Um, and I knew that I wanted to continue to learn with Chick-fil-A. I knew that I wanted to eventually have my own store. And so I really wanted to go to a place where I knew that they were going to develop me and be super intentional with me and teach me everything that I could learn. Um, so I actually was in Syracuse at one point for an event that my aunt was having. Um, she is like a minister. So she came to the area, she put on an event, and I came up for it. I was originally only supposed to be up here for a few hours, and I was going to go right back home. Um, but then she told me, like, actually, like, I think you should stay in the area for a second, like, look around. And I was like, okay, this is a little odd. Um, so 
I like went to a coffee shop and I looked around the city and I was like, oh, I actually kind of like it here. Um, and so that was how I was kind of introduced to this area. So when I started to look for other stores and I really looked into the operators of the stores and who would be the person that was kind of in charge, I was like, oh, well, I'm familiar with Syracuse now. Like, let me look in this area. Um, and then Jimmer actually came up and I saw a few of his interviews. Um, and I just heard like how much of like a servant's heart that he had and I really like loved that and I was like okay like this is somebody that I think that I can really learn from um, so that's kind of how that happened so you were here for a few hours and your aunt who's a minister says stick around yeah and so you kind of just see the area and walk around and whatnot and then when did you reach out to this Chick-fil-A? Did you do it like while you were here? Did you come here while you were here? Or did you go back home and then look it up? Like how did that happen? Yeah, so I actually went back home and at that point I hadn't decided that I was going to move here yet. Um, so that was like in like January. Um, and in between that time, I kept kind of coming back and forth. There are different events and stuff that I was coming to. I just always seemed to be in Syracuse for some reason. Um, so. So it wasn't until that summertime in like June when I decided to apply for this store and I originally applied um, and just kind of put in my application like I'm already like a director at another store I would love to just come and like learn and want to be an operator and things like that. Um, so it ended up been months later when I decided to come here but I just put in an application kind of like crossed my fingers hoped that everything would be okay. So did you move here before you got the job? No, so I actually went through the interview process. I was going back and forth again. Um, and it was like right after I was kind of like hired a few weeks later. Um, I moved so your aunt that's a minister, mm -hmm. did you go back to her after all this time and say like, did God have a conversation with you that you maybe want to tell me about now? I mean, how she kind of, like you said, she kind of was just like, hey, why don't you hang out? It's almost like she had some type of feeling that maybe you were going to be here. Did you talk to her about that? Um, so, a bit, yeah. Okay. It had been something that I was saying to them before, like, I really love Sarah. Um, so her telling me to stay and, like, look around and, like, maybe, like, look around at the apartments and stuff like that, um, I definitely know that she was kind of, like, nudging me, like, hey, this, hey, maybe this is for you. Um, and, like, we talked about it and spoke about it when I was telling her about, like, just getting the job here and stuff like that. She was, like, over the moon. So let me just tell so, you just quickly about... Do you feel that there was a little divine intervention? Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> I am... Um, oh, yeah. Just like such a... I'm a believer, of course, so I love... Um, God and my desire is always to just be like completely in his will um, so this transition was quite like a trust God to kind of like figure it out for you moment if that makes sense um, just because when I first moved here I was going from like a place of such security into um, a completely new city even though I had been here back and forth a few times because of different events and stuff like that I didn't really have like a strong support system up here, yeah. so moving into just a completely new place. Um, at the time, I was like looking at different places, and I had a place secure, but I didn't even really have like an apartment secure. Yeah. So it was really just like okay, <laughs> complete like faith move. I'm trusting that this is going to be exactly what I'm supposed to be. I was nodding when you said that because I absolutely. <laughs> the biggest moves in my life that have turned into be the biggest blessings have come from people probably going like shouldn't you do a little more like shouldn't you have this yeah. should you have that but you're just like I, i'm just i'm trusting where he where i feel like he wants me like if he doesn't want me here i, I feel like i wouldn't be I, I would be pulled away and something would just click and then you look back on it and you're like, I don't know what it was, but I just did it. God in your life, like you said, you always want to be in his will.
will, completely in his will. How do you surrender to that every day when we live in a world that is so individualistic, so about themselves, so about what can I get, how much, you know, how much can I put in my house, how much money can I make, like how many things can I have? When you say I want to be forever in his will, how do you surrender to that and be yourself? And obviously there's things you want to do, right? There's places you want to go and, and like you're obviously living and wanting to enjoy your life, but how do you give it up to him? Um, I, I don't know. I think that a huge part of it for me is a whole lot of humility. Um, just come into a place where I recognize, like, Brianna, you don't, you don't know everything. You don't have all the answers. Um, there will be times where I like question, like, why is this happening? What's going on? And things like that. Um, but I feel like I just like go to that place of humility and also just like trust, like, okay, God, like, if you're telling me to do something, it's for a reason. Like, you have my best interest in mind, and I'm not you. So I have no clue why you're asking me to do something. I have no clue why you're saying don't do that or do this. Yeah. Um, but what I do know and what I do trust is that God knows so much better than I do. Um, and I think that that's something that I try to really lean on. And when in doubt, <laughs> um, I have really great people around me that I think that kind of helped to center me in that as well. Um, so like I was telling you, my aunt who's a minister, even... Um, my mother she's not technically <laughs> my mother but she's someone that god has brought into my life and she has absolutely mothered me um and so i have people like that who i can kind of go to and be like hey like this is what's going on and i don't know what to do and um they help to kind of keep me on the right path which is so helpful. you've said this woman that has become your mother yeah you're your childhood, what was that like? And when did you meet this person that's become your mom? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> um, what was my childhood like? It was very interesting. Um, if I can be fully honest, um, it was it was hard. Um, I don't think that it was the intention um, of my parents or the people around me, but I think that just life happened um, in different circumstances, but it kind of felt a little loveless at times. Um, not that I wasn't loved as a child, but I don't think that I felt it. Um, and I don't think that it was so much expressed in words either. Um, so that was a really difficult thing to deal with. Um, in school, it was interesting at young ages. I think that I went through a lot of, um, like, just, like, bullying and, like, challenges and different things like that. Um, so childhood and, like, teenage years were actually extremely difficult. Um, and I never really felt like I had um, a safety net in that. So it was kind of like Brianna out here in the world um, by herself. And then once I was into my more so like adult years so like well young adult years so I was like 23 24 ish um at the time when I met my um the woman who I now call my mother um it was really weird the way that we met so I have a lot of people um that I'm connected to and that I know now that I've met through like social media and things like that so she was somebody that knew someone that I knew um and she was having like an event and she was like I'm just like selecting a few people that I think that are like amazing um to kind of like help me like advertise for my event and things like that so that's how I kind of like first started to know her and she would go like on live and stuff like that so I clicked into one of her lives one time and she was just like speaking so highly of me and this woman like didn't really know who I was and I didn't know who she was but she was like saying like yeah Brianna I just feel like God is saying this and things like that and I'm like who is this woman and when you clicked on it you didn't know she was going to be talking about it. no okay. not at all I was just like in there and she saw my name and she was like oh Brianna 
And then she just started speaking to me, and I was like, I don't know who this woman is, but I like her. Um, so that's kind of like how I met her. And then I found myself just in a really difficult place in life. Um, and I knew that I needed change. I knew that I needed something different. I felt like I was stuck, and I had a really good friend that told me, like, hey, like you need a mentor. You need someone in your life. And so I remembered meeting this woman who had all these kind things to say about me and I remember looking at her like wow this woman is amazing um, so at the time she wasn't even doing any kind of like mentorship or anything like that um, but I contacted her and I said hey like I would really love to be mentored by you. so that's kind of how our relationship started it started as like her being my mentor um, and then it kind of transitioned into, hey, like, I know that you're somebody that God has strategically placed in my life. Um, and I think that this is who you are. To me. This is who you're supposed to be to me. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it started. So, where is it today? Mm -hmm. She is very much so still, like, she is literally, like, my mother for all intents and purposes like i call her my mom everyone here knows her as my mom i talk about her all the time yeah. um we talk pretty often a lot of times through like voice note and things like that so i have voice notes on my phone right now from her that i have to respond to later so um we keep in contact and she's just somebody that i can just say anything to and she's never like thrown off by anything um, she absolutely understands every phase of my life, which I think is amazing, and she's just so helpful to me. What's her first name? Her name is Yvette. Yvette? Yes. So, what do you want to say to her? Um, oh gosh. <laughs> um, well, I would love to just tell her thank you. Um, you already know that I love you. I tell you all of the time. Um, but I would just love to say just like thank you. Um, you came into my life at a time that was extremely difficult. Um, and you like filled in a, a very large gap that I had in my life. Um, and I am so just like 100% certain that I would just not be where I am today if I didn't have you in my life. So thank you and I love you and I think that you are the absolute best person ever. <laughs> Beautiful message. Well, thank you. So you've had her as your mentor, as yeah. your mom, mm -hmm. and total stranger. And that's how it typically happens. Weird like happenings where you're like yeah. like why why did we even have a conversation with total strangers uh -huh. and then all of a sudden that, that's your family yeah how has god even i mean with that yes but like in your life in general do you just find yourself at a point where you don't even question anymore you're like okay yeah i cross paths with somebody you just look at him and you just go like Thanks, because I, I feel like like we we, we forget how we start mm -hmm. relationships with people and how they just happen. Yeah. And once yeah. they've happened, all these years go by, and then you're like, I would do anything with this person. I know they would do anything for me. Like this is my family. Yeah. Like, do do you ever just find yourself taking a step back, going, God, you are such a purposeful God. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I think that's something that I think about like all the time now. Um, something that my mom talks about all the time is just like flowing with God. Um, and I think that sometimes as like people in general, we can get to a place where we feel like maybe we're behind or we're not like in the right place or we're going to miss something or like yeah. we're going to miss out on something. Um, but something that I am like just really encouraged by is just um, how purposeful and how intentional God is. Um, I look back on like the past few years of my life and I'm like everything has just been not because I've like orchestrated it, not because I've like been perfect every single bit day, but it's literally because God is just like 
bleeding my life, like bit by bit. He's like, okay, now you're gonna meet this person. Once you meet this person, this person's gonna introduce you to this person. And once you do this, then you're gonna do this. So I think that that's amazing because I think it just brings such like a calmness and a peace. Once you recognize that like, God is orchestrating all of it. Like I don't have to like struggle and scramble all the time. I can just like rest. Like, okay. Mentor others. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yes, in kind of like a few ways, if that makes sense. So, um, I never really thought about myself as like a mentor to other people. That's not something that I ever thought that I would do. Um, but I, a few years ago, I worked at a therapeutic boarding school for troubled teens. Um, and I feel like that's kind of where I got my start when it comes to just like, mentoring other people because that was like literally my job um, to like interact with and pour into and love um, these like teenage girls who were going through like the worst points in life. Um, so after that experience I kind of like leaned into it like I felt like it was something that God was really like hey like, this is a part of like just who you are. Um, so Yes, I think that it just comes out of me naturally sometimes. Um, but I would love to kind of like in the future be more intentional um, about like mentoring um, other people. Yeah. So, in that intention of mentoring other people, you said you came here with the intent of owning your own Chick fil A someday. Yeah. You work with Jimmer Sikowski. So, your thoughts on Jimmer as a leader here? And and then your your thoughts on the aspirations of opening your own place someday. Um, well, I think that I think that Jimmer is a fantastic leader. Um, I think that I just kind of like watch um, the way that he the way that he has communication with people, um, the way that he loves people, especially. Um, I look at those things and internally, I'm always saying like, okay, I need to learn from this. Like, this is a lesson for me. I need to learn from this. I need to learn from this. Um, because it's just different. Um, I feel like he's just one of the most like loving and generous people that I've ever met. Um, and sometimes I look at it and I'm like, I don't know if I agree with this. I don't. I don't know. But then, um, everything he does is just coming from such a pure place. Um, so yeah, I just really respect him as a leader. Um, I think that he's a phenomenal leader, and I'm really excited that um, God like orchestrated it for me to come here. Um, just because I feel like I'm learning from like the best, and that feels great to me. Um, and then as far as being like an operator, I'm going to be really honest, I think it's a very terrifying thing. <laughs> as much as I'm like, ooh, like, I would love to do this, I'm also terrified by it. But it was something that I didn't necessarily want initially. Um, I wanted to just come into Chick-fil-A and be a leader and grow myself. Um, but my previous operator, before he passed away, one of the very like last conversations that he ever had with me was telling me that he thought that I would be great um, to be an operator. And that kind of like planted a seed. And then a few months later, I was in a class that was taught by my aunt. And she was like, just speaking to me. And then she was like, are you like, are you like, learning and growing right now like are you do you want your own store god's gonna give you your own store and i was like no <laughs> I, I i said that i was like no i don't want that <laughs> you're you're insane i would never um like put myself on that path but i think that it's just something that has kind of been put in front of me um so rather than saying no like i have multiple times um i'm just saying like okay whatever it is that you want me to do i'm gonna do it well and you've said that you've lived your life being comfortably uncomfortable yeah <laughs> so i would think that your trajectory your path mm -hmm. god is going 
I've been setting you up yep. and putting you in all these places. So, uh, of course, if you're like, no, nah, I'm afraid of it, I don't know about it, he's like, well, then we're going to do it. Yeah. You get that feel? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I feel like the more that I say no and that I don't want to do it, the more that I'm like, maybe this is probably yeah. what it is. Yeah. So, I want to definitely respect, and I'm going to say is, not was, because they're up in heaven now. But the name of the operator that you had that, that passed away, what yeah. is his name? His name was Jim Stroll. Jim? Mm -hmm. So, and Jim, like, you not only having that conversation with him about him saying, I believe he'll be a great operator someday, mm -hmm. but you said it was one of the last conversations. Yeah. Does that, like, even make God's message more kind of clear to you, no matter how much time passes by, that it was almost like Jim's legacy to be like, hey, this is where I see, like, does that echo in you that that, that was one of the last conversations? I think that it definitely um, does, of course. I know that <laughs> I've said it before that I just, like, was so adamant that, like, maybe this isn't, like, what I want to do. And still sometimes I'm like, are you sure that that's, like, what you want? But um, I think that he just keeps sending, like, person after person and like thing after thing um, to just kind of confirm it. So I definitely look back at that conversation and I was like, one, I'm so thankful for it. Um, but I'm also thankful for it just in the context of what was kind of going on at the store and the fact that that was the last conversation I got to have with him. Um, I just really value that time. You seem like a beacon of light, which is obviously very, very much what the light between us is all about. And so to those that are trying to find their own path, you being the director of talent, what would you say to somebody that's watching and listening that is trying to figure out what they want to do with their life, doesn't know where God is in their life, doesn't know if God is in their life? What would you want to say to somebody who's, who's just trying to find their place? Ooh. I feel like there could be a lot of things I could say, but I think that for me personally, um, it feels like my journey into really like figuring out my life and like who I'm supposed to be really just started once I. Um, really kind of gave my life over to God. Um, I think that sometimes it feels like, oh, like, he's not there, or I don't know what's going on, and yada, yada, yada. Um, but I think that if you just trust him, if you seek him, um, he will absolutely meet you where you are. Um, and I feel like that's the best thing that you can do in life. I'm sure that there's a whole lot of people that can give a whole lot of different advice, but I think that for me, that's always been um, like the best part of my journey is just like going through everything with God. A winding road needs a focus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Rihanna, I mean, this has been, I don't know how to end it because I want to continue the conversation. So. <laughs> Hopefully we will. Maybe maybe this is another path crossing that God was like, hey, I'm making you guys do this right now. Absolutely. So, Brianna Henderson, myself, Dan Tortora, this has been The Light Between Us from Chick-fil-A Cicero. Come out here to 7916 Bruger Road in Cicero, New York, and see that it is far more than just a chicken sandwich and that you are loved. So, with that being said, as we always say here on Wake Up Call, God bless, no stress, do your best. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Yeah.